In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam ala wa rasulullah. We're going to begin a new topic of discussion starting today. For the next two weeks, we're going to speak about something that all the Muslims around the world today need to ponder. And that is the importance of guarding our tongue. The importance of guarding our tongue. We're living in the days of fitna that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us against. These are signs of the last hour, the days in which Muslims will fight against each other. They will argue in the masjids. They will even kill one another in the masjids, which, and it's happening all over the world every day. Muslims are getting in arguments over ridiculous things, arguing about the religion, debating the religion and what's lawful and what isn't lawful, and then they get angry and think you're a kafir and shoot you and kill you and think that they go into paradise as a martyr because they shot you because you said something about the prophet and his wives or whatever and couldn't prove it. Well, these are the days of fitna. And it all begins with the tongue. And so this is why for the next two weeks, I'm going to focus on the importance of guarding against your tongue. Now, Allah tells us in the Quran, in the interpretation, the meaning, not a word does a person utter without there being an angel to write it down. So here Allah is letting us know Everything that comes out our mouth, the angels, the recording angels are writing it down. Each and every one of us as human beings, we have an angel that hoovers over our right shoulder and an angel that hoovers over our left shoulder. They record our good and bad deeds. If you say something good, the angel on the right writes it down. If you say something bad, the angel on the left writes it sit down. Now, Allah does not hold us accountable for our thoughts. If you keep it in your head to yourself and don't utter it, it's not written, and Allah doesn't hold you accountable. But once you open your mouth and put out whatever you were thinking, you're held accountable for it. And that's why Allah says, verily, your Lord is ever watchful. That means Allah can see everything that we say and do because of those two angels that are assigned to us. So thus, guys, every single one of us as human beings, we have to be careful to watch what we say out of our mouths. Again, what we're thinking is okay. Allah doesn't hold us to account for that. But once you open your mouth and say it, if it's something bad, you're held accountable for it. If it's something good, it will count in your favor. So what do you learn from that as a Muslim? You learn that if you don't have anything beneficial to say, then just keep your mouth shut. And oftentimes, it's best to just remain silent. Because if we were to filter most of what comes out of our mouths, most of what we come out of what we see out of our mouths is not of any benefit. And that's what the prophet meant when he said in the authentic hadith, whoever believes in Allah and the last day should speak good or else remain silent. So say, for example, you go to the masjid. There's a sister in the mosque that you don't like. You see other sisters speaking very well about her. Oh, Sister Amira is so nice. Oh, I really like her. She invited us over to her house for lunch. I guess we should go. But you happen to not like this sister because this sister did something to her. So you say, hmm, let me let them know. Uh, I just want to warn y'all. She ain't all that. She's not the way y'all think she is. You should have kept your mouth shut. Rather than putting your two cents in to try to attack another person's character or reputation, just shut up. Remember we talked in the, the class on the lawful and the unlawful that the simple fact that we're all Muslims means that our character and reputation is off limits. 
The, you cannot attack another Muslim's character, another Muslim's uh, uh, reputation like that. We don't even boycott each other for personal reasons. We only boycott if that person has violated one of the tenets of a law. So again, if there you have nothing good to say, then remain silent. And now we live in the days of social media. The same applies on the internet. You're on Facebook. You see a lot of Muslims typing good things about this sister who you don't like. So now you want to go and say, uh, let me tell y'all, she ain't all that. Y'all need to be warned. She's not really that a good person. I heard she said this, or I heard she did that. A stock for law. You should have kept your mouth shut. You should not have written it down on that Facebook page. If they're saying something about another Muslim that you don't like, then you just shut up and leave. You don't put your two cents in. So again, guys, unless what you have to say is good, then just shut it up. Listen to what some of the early scholars said. Imam Ashafi. He said, when a person desires to talk, then it is upon him to think before he speaks. If there is benefit in what he has to say, then he should go ahead and speak. But if he doesn't have anything of benefit to say, then he should remain silent and not say anything at all. Listen to what Abu Musa al-Ashari said. He said, I said to the prophet, O prophet of Allah, who are the best of the Muslims? And the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered and said, the best of the Muslim is the one whose tongue and hand the other Muslims are safe from. Subhanallah. If you can guarantee that you won't hurt anyone with your hand or hurt anyone with your tongue, then this is a truly good person, a good Muslim. And that's what the prophet meant when he said in another hadith, whoever can guarantee that he will guard what is between his, his, his tongue and what is between his legs, I will guarantee that person paradise. Remember, guys, the, two number, the number two reasons as to why most people end up in the hellfire is failure to control their private parts and failure to control their tongues. That's why most people are going to be in the hellfire. Because of the backbiting, the slander, the vicious, mean, cruel things you said about someone. Or because you couldn't control your desires, you ended up fornicating, adulterating, or touching someone that you should not have touched. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Indeed, a person will say a word while being unaware of its consequences. But because of that word, that, that word, he will be cast into the hellfire. So again, we may say things out of our mouths that we don't think is bad. You may not think is bad. But in the sight of Allah, it was horrible because it's something derogatory. You may not think it's a bad thing to type on Facebook, uh, I don't like that sister. I think y'all need to be wary of her. You may think you're doing something good. You're giving good advice. But in reality, you're attacking. You're putting suspicion. You're casting suspicion or doubt on a person. You're attacking their honor, their reputation, their character. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Indeed, a person will speak words that are pleasing to Allah, which may end up being a condition in which Allah will raise him up in paradise. And on the other hand, a person can speak words that are displeasing to Allah, which will be the reason why he will be thrown into the hellfire. So we have to be careful. Each day, we blow many of our good deeds. Because of our tongue, because we could not control what we wrote on Facebook. We could not control what came out of our mouths. We're allowing our personal feelings to, about others to interfere in our relationships with others.
And as a result, the good deeds that we do are being blown up in smoke and instead we'll end up in the hellfire. We have a hadith where as one of the companions said that he went to the prophet and said, O prophet of Allah, tell me something that I should keep with me forever. The prophet said, okay, I'll give you some good advice. He said, say that you believe in Allah and remain firm in that belief. And then the person said, okay, I'll do that. And tell me, O oh prophet, what's the most serious thing that I could ever do that I should fear doing? The prophet then grabbed his tongue and said, fear this, this right here. Because again, that's one of the top two reasons as to why most of us will end up in hell because we could not control our tongue. Remember guys, backbiting, even if you speak the truth, if you say something that another person would not like in his absence, even if it's the truth, it's backbiting. That's the sin of the tongue, even if it's the truth. So again, we're going to have to force ourselves. This is advice for you and me too, especially me, especially us women. We women really suffer. We get angry and we want to talk about people all the time. I do it. We all, this is a big problem with women. This is one of the reasons why there'll be more women in hell than men. We're going to have to work on controlling what comes out of our mouth, even if it's the truth. Okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not talk without remembering Allah, because too much talk without remembering Allah makes the heart hard. And the people who are furthest away from Allah are those who have a hard heart. So be careful, especially when you're sitting around at work with your co-workers or you're sitting around a group with other women or other brothers, you know, y'all just talking about trivial things. Be careful because it can lead to backbiting. It can lead to, lead to gossip. It can lead to, did you hear what happened the other day with brother so-and-so? Did you hear what happened at, uh, with, with that person there? It can end up to the rumor mill scandal and all of that. And it'll make your heart hard, whereas you don't even think. You just start speaking bluntly about people without even thinking of the of the bad things that's a hard heart and so this is why our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged us to be careful be careful what comes out of our mouth he used to tell the companions restrain your tongue and remain in your home and weep over your own sins in other words Another problem we have, we, whenever we go around other people, we want to get in other people's business. What happened? What happened? Did you hear? Stay in your home and mind your own business. Weep over your own problems, your own mistakes, your own sins, and don't concern yourself with somebody else. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the son of Adam wakes up from sleep, all of his body parts seek refuge from the tongue. They say, fear Allah in regards to us because we are a part of you. If you are good, then we will be good. But if you are bad, then we will be bad. So every time we wake up in the morning, guys, our hands, our feet, our face, our arms, they say, A'udhu Billahi, O oh Allah, protect me from her tongue. Because if she says something bad, we're going to, all of our body parts are going to end up in the hellfire. SubhanAllah. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, everything that a person says is against him, except the good things that we say. So again, we have to be careful. Careful what comes out of our mouths. Because how well we guard what comes out of our mouth determines what our ultimate outcome will be. It determines whether we'll end up in paradise or hell, and also it shows how strong our faith is. Because again, guys, we were created criminal by nature. It's the nature of the human being to want to get in other people's business. 
and find faults with others. We're attracted to what's bad and dirty and evil. So it takes a strong person <clears throat> to learn to keep his mouth shut. The stronger you are in doing that shows how strong your belief in Allah is. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the goodness of a person's religion shows if he can abandon things that don't concern him. If he can stay away from talking about other people's business. Because it's the nature of the human to want to try to think himself superior over others. We all have problems. We all have instances in life that are depressing. So sometimes it makes you feel better to think somebody's worse off than you. So if, if you can stay away from other people's business, then that shows how strong your iman is. Okay, so we really, 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 really have to work on this. And this is why Ibn Iyad said, whoever limits his speech to be in accordance with his actions will minimize his speech on that which doesn't concern him. So it's hard to do. It's hard to do. And that's why Imam Ashafi said, do not speak about things that don't concern you. Because indeed, every time you speak a word, it takes control of you, and you don't have control over it. Once you start talking about a person, about other people, it's hard to stop, guys. It's hard to stop running your mouth. Again, the tongue is like a savage beast. If you don't lock it up, it will work against you. So again, this is why for the next two weeks, I want all of you to come to these classes every day because we are going to learn how to guard our tongue. This series is not only a benefit to you, but to me as well, because even I have to work on this. This is a problem that all of us as humans have. Guarding the tongue should be a goal of each and every one of us as Muslims. So I want you guys to come here every day. We're going to speak about the dangers of the tongue. We're going to speak about what backbiting is. We're going to speak about how to stop ourselves from backbiting, how to stop ourselves from getting involved with other people's business. And we're going to speak about the consequences of not doing so and the rewards of being able to do so. As a poet once said, guard your tongue, O mankind, and do not let it bite you. Because a tongue is a snake. And how many people in the graves are there who were killed because of their tongues? Whoever fears meeting a law on a day of judgment is truly the one who is brave. So make sure you guys are here every day. This class is held at 6 p.m. We're going to have quizzes. There's going to be a quiz to cover what I spoke about today. I want you guys to remember these hadiths and the meaning because I'm going to give you questions tomorrow and ask you to give me hadiths that help best relate to those questions. Because I've given you many hadiths now on the tongue and also uh, the meaning. So we'll stop right here for today. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and